So quick recap, we did this once and I don't remember a single thing about Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> and I told you to give me more spicy cards, so this is going to be even worse than last time. All you gotta know is that graveyard good, special summoning really good. That's that's all you gotta know. I don't know if that's going to help, but we'll try our best. Let's start off with the first card, Card Destruction. Card Destruction is a spell card. Both players discard as many cards as possible from their hands. Then each player draws the same number of cards they discarded. Okay, so graveyard good. And if I remember correctly, discarding cards puts them in the graveyard. Yes. So this card is good. <laughs> That's my final answer. <laughs> just, just no further thought. Well, like, okay, so we actually had a card like this in Hearthstone. Basically, it was used in Warlock, and Warlock would basically shuffle their entire hand in and draw that many cards. And that card was played because it was very synergistic in the deck that you ran it in. So I would imagine if you're the one running this card, it will be good in the deck that you want to run it in. Also, drawing that many cards is probably extremely beneficial depending on... I mean, even if you draw, like, two cards from this... It's probably not that bad, but most of the time you're going to play this, you're probably playing this pretty early on when you have a, a lot of cards in your hand. So it's probably just a good card. Yeah, this card is actually like miserably bad. Dude. Oh my God, are you? Bro, you told me Graveyard Good. Okay, well, this is like one of those exceptions. <laughs> All right, let me, let me give you the quick rundown. <laughs> if you're playing this, let's say turn one, you're basically going neg one because you're not using the card destruction to replace itself, so you're only going to be drawing up to four cards, and your opponent gets a full reload. Two, even if you are playing a deck that is really synergistic with sending themselves to the graveyard, stuff like Dark Worlds or the Dangers, uh, that sort of stuff, those sort of decks usually aren't good enough, and this card is just like extremely high roll in that aspect, where you have to open like exactly four of those cards plus the destruction, and three, your opponent also gets the graveyard beneficiary effect, so if they've got cards in their hand that synergize in the graveyard, they get a fresh reload and they get resources for next turn. So for like those sort of reasons, card destruction is pretty bad. <laughs> Alright, what's next? We've got this card, Gren Maju de Aiza. This card's attack slash defense are equal to the number of your banished cards times 400. Okay, how hard is it to get a banished card in Yu-Gi-Oh? There are a lot of cards in Yu-Gi-Oh that either just generate banished cards on their own or they have like banishing effects stuff like pot of desires if you remember from last time that just straight up banishes yeah. 10 cards there are a lot of ways to get cards banished within the game this card's also dynamic right when this is played and then you banish another card it still gains stats right yes i'm gonna go with based on the fact that i think a card like this in hearthstone would probably see play depending on the critical mass of banished cards you can generate for this card to be effective the fact that you don't have to sacrifice another minion seems like this card would be good because you could play it pretty early on and maybe it just grows an infinite amount that turn and you wait is there somebody sickness in Yu-Gi-Oh? i can't remember there is no summoning sickness everything's got charge the fact that this has charge then i mean you could attack the, the the exact same turn you play it you could probably do a bunch of banishing in the same turn and this card could potentially just do an insane amount of damage right like this feels like a very snowbally effect and usually snowbally effects that are played early on are good in hearthstone so that's my best knowledge for this right obviously we don't really have banishing effects in hearthstone but i would imagine if you could put this in your deck you're going to be banishing a ton of cards which means this card might be good enough I don't know how important a lot of stats are in Yu-Gi-Oh, but if you could play it that early on, it might be actually good. So I'm going to go with it's probably good towards average, but not like meta breaking. This card has been at best very average. <sighs> okay, I mean, you're you're halfway there. I'll give you that. So the main issue with this card is that it's because uh, Yu-Gi-Oh has 8000 life points. It's really hard to consistently get Daiza up to like a big enough stat total where you could just like one shot your opponent. Like I said earlier, there are like a ton of cards that can enable this, but because Gren Maju's got literally no protection, if your opponent just like saves any interruption for the Gren Maju itself, like a, like a single pop can literally just ruin your entire turn and you're just playing with basically big vanillas. And at that point, if you're not killing them, your opponent's gonna have just free reign over you turn three and probably just kill you in the follow up. Yeah, I guess the, the interaction between turns makes this a weaker card. Next, we have Artifact Scythe. You can set this card from your hand to your spell and trap zone as a spell. 
during your opponent's turn, if this set card in the spell, I guess, and trap zone is destroyed and sent to your graveyard, special summon it. If this card is special summoned during your opponent's turn, your opponent cannot special summons monster from the extra deck for the rest of the turn. Wow, this is kind of cool. Do you put this card face down when you played in the trap zone? Yeah, you set it the same way you do it for like a spell or like a trap card. So you can kind of bait your opponent to like, oh, I'm going to destroy this trap so they can't actually stop my turn. And then you're like, psych. This effect is very niche though, right? Because we kind of had a card like this last time where if your opponent like destroyed it, you got a huge benefit of it. But it looked awful because if your opponent doesn't actually do anything with it, then it's absolutely useless. Like if you put this down as a spell and trap card and they just never interact with it, it's just a dead card in a sense, right? Am I am I reading that correctly? Um, th you could pop it yourself in order to trigger it. But if you do that yourself, you don't destroy. Do you destroy it? I'm just so I'm reading it correctly or understanding it correctly. Yeah, if you're using like an effect to destroy it on your opponent's turn, then it oh. does. Re then it does resummon. Okay, itself. sorry. My, my, I, I was, I wasn't understanding what you meant. So you could use like another card to destroy this in a sense. Yes. Okay. So then this card's better than the other card, 100 percent of the time. Going against a very particular deck, this probably is game winning. So I'm gonna go with the fact that this card is at least average, but I would probably lean towards good, depending on what the deck is. Yeah, this card is really, really good. You got that correct. Yes. Locking yes. your opponent out of special summoning from the extra deck, where like 99% of decks need is basically just game winning on its own. It's basically just skip your opponent's turn 99% of the time. So yeah, this card is uh, pretty good. Next, we've got Herald of the Arclight. Any monster sent from the hand or main deck to the graveyard is banished instead. When a spell slash trap card or monster effect is activated, quick effect, you could tribute this card, negate the activation, and if you do destroy that card, the card is sent to the graveyard, you can add one ritual monster or one ritual spell from your deck to your hand. Ooh, okay, the first line looks like it's pretty, it could be pretty spicy. There has to be a huge benefit to you banishing a card rather than sending it to the graveyard. Like if your opponent's deck is not built for that, like that has to be insane. And I imagine if you're gonna put this in your deck, banishing cards is probably going to be more beneficial than sending cards to a graveyard. I could be wrong about that, but that's my thought process. The first two sentences, like the quick effect too, is insane. I swear to God, listen to me. You can't tell me this card is bad. This card has to be good. Every sentence is like beneficial to you. Like this, this seems like a very powerful effect. I'm going to go with it's very good. Would you be mad at me if I told you this card is bad? I would. <sighs> no. Don't worry, because this card is actually like broken. Let's go. <laughs> I was really trying to bait you if like, but it only has 600 attack points. It's so weak. At this point, I think the stat line is basically irrelevant. <laughs> like I don't even read it at this point. If you put enough effects on a monster, it just doesn't matter what the stats are. This card is just the nuts. This card is either just like a play starter because you could either just send it with a card effect from your extra deck to the graveyard to get a search. It's either just an additional point of interruption. Like this card is just everything. Next card he's got a lot of text so <laughs> take as much time as you need for this red eyes dark dragoon cannot be destroyed by card effects neither player can target this card with card effects during your main phase you can destroy one monster your opponent controls and if you do inflict damage to your opponent equal to the monster's original attack you can use this effect a number of times per turn up to number of normal monsters used as fusion material for this card once per turn, when a card or effect is activated, quick effect, you could discard one card, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card, and if you do, this card gains a hundred or a thousand attack. Whew. Obviously, this card is insane. So it really comes down to how likely are you to actually special su or summon this, I guess. I don't know if this is a special summon. It doesn't look like it is. It's a special summon. There's no way after reading that paragraph that this card is not uber strong if it's in play. Like that's insane. Like your opponent can't interact with this card if I if I, based on what I'm reading, unless they attack it with an actual creature. Do you want like a couple hits? I mean, sure, I'll, I'll take a couple hits. This card is very easy to summon because there's a fusion spell that basically just sends the required materials from deck and the required materials are just two vanillas that you're just never gonna summon. Okay, I think this card is very good. Now the question comes down to, are you baiting me? 
<laughs> like, is this card actually a straight bait? I don't know. The fact that you even said that you can get the materials, I, I imagine what you're saying is you could just draw those, put those cards in your hand, and then you have the materials to summon those. You don't even need the materials in hand. You could just send them from deck to graveyard. Are you reverse baiting me? Like, are you trying to make me think that this is bad, but it's also insane? How could this be bad? <laughs> Like you play this, you kill their monster that could potentially kill this minion. And like, what are your, what does your opponent do? They just lose. Like it's over at that point. Like you could discard their, you could even like negate any spell that they do after, right? Swear when a card in effect is active. Yeah, dude, this card's nuts. Like it has to be insane. No, 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 it's insane. This card is actually pretty bad. <laughs> no way, dude. I have to hear the reasoning. Why is this bad? Okay, so theoretically, in a vacuum, this card is like absolutely broken. Like it pops two cards, it burns, it has protection, it's got a negate. Like it's just uber duper broken. The problem is it doesn't really have a clean slot to be placed into most decks. Like Hearthstone has cards like that where like in theory they're insane, but it's they just can't slot into any deck. So like therefore like there's still a good card, but they're just not played. So technically, hold on a second. Technically, <laughs> oh, no. I was correct. I was correct. This card is insane. Ah. It just not it's not played yet. Copia. This card has been legal for three years. It has ah. one top, dude. The main problem is that the materials you need, plus the fusion spell that you need to summon this card, you're basically at minimum playing three bricks in your deck that you're just hoping to never draw. Would you say, though, that there potentially at some point in the future, this card would be good? If there was a card that treated itself as the materials and wasn't terrible on its own, I'd say it'd be pretty good. But right now, okay. I don't think Konami's really given us any more bones. Next up, we've got a break from the monsters. We've got a trap card. Imperial Order negates all spell effects on the field once per turn during the standby phase. You must pay 700 life points. This is not optional this card is destroyed so this is a trap card that can be used multiple times or i guess over multiple turns as long as you're willing to pay the the fee in a sense yes the gaining all spell effects on the field this has to be decent like in the like again like this is a this is a card that you would put into a deck that you could utilize this effect very nicely also paying 700 life points looks like a negative but i honestly feel like it wouldn't be a negative in the correct deck like Hearthstone has that, right? Like I, I mentioned Warlock a lot. Warlock has a lot of things like this where it does gain beneficial things where when it's like a lower life total. And if you don't want to pay any more life, you could just destroy this card. That doesn't seem that bad. So like, no, you have to pay the life points. Like you don't get a choice. Oh, so this card will continuously uh, take life points from you until you don't have enough life to actually pay the cost. Yes. I would say this card's pretty good. Like, it feels like this effect is very powerful. And I feel like, honestly, in a game like Yu-Gi-Oh, paying 700 life points is probably more beneficial than a, than it's like a negative. So I'm going to think it's pretty good. Yep, you're correct. This card is pretty broken. Yes. yes. Yeah, just having a card that just says you cannot use, like, half of your deck is pretty good. Who would have guessed that just shutting down half of your <laughs> opponent's cards is just, like, you know, good enough. Like, just imagine in, like, Hearthstone, there was just, like, a zero mana card that just said ping yourself for three every turn, but your opponent cannot activate like any spell cards. Yeah, it's really, really broken actually. Is this card banned? Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! usually bans cards that are just like, extremely oppressive, and IO is one of those cards. Next card, Simorg. Two monsters, including a winged beast monster, cannot be used as link material. Your opponent cannot target this card or a winged beast monster monsters this card points with card effects. This card points, what does that mean? So you see how it's like the little arrows? Oh! Any monster in a zone that it points to can't be targeted by a card effect. Wait, that's kind of interesting. If this card would be destroyed by battle, you can destroy one other S'more card you control instead. Oh, okay, so as long as another monster is in those arrows, you can kill that monster instead? doesn't even have to be in the arrows. During the end phase, you could special summon one winged beast monster from your hand or deck with a level equal to lower than the number of unused spell trap zones on the field. I do, this is a really interesting card. Like, I, I don't know how hard it really is to summon this minion, but the effect is good. Like, your opponent can't target this card or any of the monsters, winged beast monsters that are in the pointing, so that can be up to four monsters on your field. I don't know what other winged beast monsters do, but seeing the effects that some monsters have in Yu-Gi-Oh, I'd imagine that they're pretty decent. And 
if you want to make sure this card just lives, you just sacrifice another card and then it's still like as frustrating as possible. Because it's a win more effect. I don't think it would necessarily be a win more effect, but it might be like how relevant is it to continuously stop your opponent from targeting this card when they can just kill you instead or something. Hearthstone kind of has, has effect like this, not really destroying the monster side of it or like special summoning, but there are effects in Hearthstone that stop your opponent from targeting things with spells. That effect can be really, really good, but it also could just be like absolutely useless because if your opponent doesn't need to target the minions, it doesn't matter. This is probably decent, maybe leaning towards at least average to good, but like, I don't think this is like super strong. I might regret saying that, but I think that's my answer. Yeah, this card is actually banned. This card is broken. <laughs> Damn it, man. It looks so good. It looks good. You were like kind of right for the first part. Originally, this card was, it was kind of like, okay, it was very much just like a win more because you would just summon this if you had the material and usually like it would just give you like an extra piece of negation that like you didn't really need most of the time. And for the most part, that's kind of just how people treated this. But when we got a lot more support for Winged Beasts later on in these cards called Lyralisk Monsters, which are all just like little birds, eventually people realized that, oh, wait a minute, we could just play this card. And this card is honestly just <laughs> enough, like a good enough win condition on its own. Because you could either oh. just summon more play starters during the end phase if you already had everything. You could summon a floodgate called Barrier Statue of the Storm Winds, where your opponent can only special summon wind monsters. You could just summon a negate, which is... I mean, I don't think I have to explain why that's good. Yeah, I talked myself out of this. Yeah. I think uh, Dragoon kind of baited me to think that this card's weaker than it's probably supposed to be. Because uh, that effect looks so good. And then you said it was like average. This card like almost in theory is like the almost the same effect, but I guess it's just easier to build around. So therefore it's be a better card. Yeah, exactly. Why didn't you show me this one first? <laughs> Gotta get inside your head. Gotta make sure you double question every single card I send you. Got another monster for you. Gamma Seal. You can special summon this card from your hand to your opponent's field in attack position by tributing one monster they control. If your opponent controls a kaiju monster, you can special summon this card from your hand in attack position. You can only control one kaiju monster. When your opponent activates a card or effect, except this, this card, quick effect, you can remove two kaiju counters from anywhere on the field, negate the activation, and if you do banish that card. Okay, oh my God, that was a lot. The effect of special summoning a minion to your opponent's side is extremely interesting and you tribute one of their monsters, which is kind of cool. If they have a really cool, like a really big monster, I could just say that monster is gone and now you have this card. Yes. Let's say I special summon this minion for my opponent and they have another kaiju monster. Does that kaiju monster, do they get to pick which one survives? Do they both survive? You're just not allowed to special summon it. Like if your opponent has say like a Dragoon and like a Kamungus, the sticky string kaiju, you're not allowed to like tribute the Dragoon for the ga Gamma Seal. They're only allowed to control one. Wow, this is a really cool card. A lot of versatility and it seems like it's decent. Also, I guess if your opponent is not prepared to have this card on their side of the board, the quick effect is absolutely useless because they, unless they can generate those counters, this that effect is absolutely garbage. So there is a lot of upside to a card like this. So the question comes down to, is this worth actually playing into a deck now? I don't know, man. If I had a card that said you can destroy any minion that you want in your opponent's board and you can summon this card instead, like I feel like I would play that in Hearthstone at least. But like I'm focusing mainly on the first sentence and the first sentence has to be extremely powerful. Like we've seen cards that negate spells, but you could just be like, all right, that card's gone. Now I can play my spells again. So like, how is this bad? Like this has to be a good card. Is that your final Please. answer? That's my final answer. Yeah, you got every <laughs> single point possible correct. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> like I, I legitimately think the first sentence alone is enough to see the, for this card to see play. Yeah, you're like 100% correct. Like this card could honestly just have that one line and it would be good. At, it would be like just as good. The best way I could describe it in, I guess, Hearthstone terms is basically just like a spell that says like silence, destroy a minion and then give them like a 5-5 five, five or something. Got another trap card for you. Witch's Strike. First of all, this art is pretty sick. If your opponent negates the normal or special summon of a monster or monsters or the activation of a card or effect, destroy all cards your opponent controls and in their hand. 
Oh my God. The only issue with this card is that you're relying on your opponent to do something. You said special summons pretty, pretty powerful. It seems like it's very good. So most decks would have to have some kind of ability to like negate the effect. And you just destroy everything that they have. All right, dude, there's no way this card's not good. Like this is, this is insane. The only reason I'm thinking it's insane though is because you have told me that special summoning is good, but also like almost every single card I've seen has some kind of effect that they can activate. So your opponent would want to stop some kind of effect on your monster. This card's good. Is that your final answer? Yeah, that's my final answer. <laughs> this is one of the biggest bait cards in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. This card is terrible. What the heck? Dude, what? How? How? What? I, I don't, what? Okay, explain. So essentially, this card relies on your opponent having a way to negate something and you already having this set onto your board. So if you're going second, even if your opponent has a board that's able to negate stuff, you need to wait for them to negate the activation of something. It's really interesting that you say this card's bad because th it feels like it's such a, it would be such a common thing. Like obviously you need to draw this card and play it, but like that doesn't seem that unlikely. It's sort of like if you're drawing this going first and you're already shutting down all of your opponent's plays, what are they gonna have on their board to negate something that you're gonna do? And eventually, you're just sort of hitting a point of diminishing return where the witches strike on your turn in response to whatever they're doing. Like, it very much just is very win more in like the most extreme sense of the word. I'm actually baffled you said this card's bad. Oh my god, that's crazy to me. Got another spell card for you. Prohibition. What the hell is this card? Oh my god, okay. After this card, by declaring one card name, apply these effects to all cards whose original name is the card name you declared. This does not apply to the cards that already are on the field before this effect started applying. So for every card whose original name is the one that you say, they cannot be placed on the field, cannot be activated, nor can their effects be activated or applied. They cannot be summoned or set. They cannot attack, nor they can change their battle positions. They cannot be used as a material for a special summon that requires materials. Wow, that, uh, hmm. The easy way to describe this is you call a card name, your opponent cannot summon that card, they cannot set that card, they cannot use that card, that card's effects, whether it's in the hand, deck, whatever. Yeah, that's basically it. So in theory, it's just like dead. Yeah. Like it's just a dead card. That's spicy. That's a really interesting card. Like in some cases, you're just going to say a card and the game, they lose. In theory. The bigger problem with this card is that you would have to wait and see what deck your opponent is playing. Because if you just say a card and they don't even have that in their deck, like this card is a dead card and it therefore it's absolutely horrible. Like this effect can be good. I'm not like there's no way it's not like just it, it's not unplayable. Like there's there are probably cases where this card can be played and it's probably pretty decent in a tournament setting where like maybe there's an open deck list and you could see what your opponent's playing. Because if you draw this before they can actually negate it, you just potentially could win a game. And that seems very good without getting too much in my head. I feel like this card's niche, but it can be very good. Like, I don't think it's going to be like meta breaking. Is that your final answer? Yeah, this card is very, very bad in 99% of decks. You were like pretty close. You were like, yeah, this card's only pretty good in like some decks. And then you're just like, so it has to be good in all decks. I can't imagine this card ever being played on like ladder. Like this is unplayable in that setting. Now, if I go, if I'm going to a tournament and I do know their deck list by chance, I think this card could be good. There are cases where you will draw this card and your opponent has a win condition. You're like, haha, you can't play this card. Like how, what are they gonna do? They just lose probably. But that is such a niche circumstance for this card that I would only see play in that setting. And I'm imagining that's what you're about to tell me. No, not even that because uh, Yu-Gi-Oh does not have open deck lists because this game sucks. Oh, okay. Funnily enough, it's only ever seen play in one deck. It's got way too much variance to it because in theory, like you are correct, where if you know the matchup, you could just theoretically call one card your opponent needs to get their plays going. And if they can't ever resolve that, you basically just win the, win the match. But in practice, in games one and two, you're not always going to be able to A, see this card or B, know what they're even on. So maybe you could call like a hand trap with this but then you're sort of gambling on the fact that they might not even have the hand trap in their opener or even be playing that but 99 percent of the time this card is absolutely worthless you've got this bad boy vanity's emptiness 
Neither player can special summon monsters if a card is sent from the deck or the field to your graveyard, destroy this card. Technically speaking, you would play this the turn before you think your opponent's going to pop off. Then your opponent tries to special summon. You're like, haha, I have this card. And then their turn's dead. Unless they have an answer to this, which maybe they don't. And then they just kind of lose. I feel like this again, this is like on the niche side. But again, I could also see this card being very good. If you're going to put this in your deck, you're not only losing a card technically if it does nothing, but you also can't special summon yourself, which again, I would imagine you're only going to play this on a, the board. Like if you think your opponent's about to pop off with special summons, maybe this is just an average card then, but I, I think it's on the niche side, but I could see it being like game winning on its own. I, I know that's not really a great answer for this, but I don't think it's bad and I don't necessarily think it's meta breaking and has to be somewhere in between. I'll give you half points for that. Yeah, this card is pretty game breaking 90% of the time. Yeah, you're basically just like on the money where basically if you just set up your own board, and you think your opponent's playing a special summon deck, which 99% of players are, you just kind of flip this card, and unless they have, like, an out to it, uh, next turn you could basically just, like, go battle phase, boom, OTK them. Got one final card for you. Brilliant Fusion. When this card is activated, Fusion summon one Gem Knight Fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your deck as fusion material. But change its attack slash defense to zero. If this card leaves the field, Destroy that monster once per turn. You can discard one spell. The monster special summoned by this card effect gains attack slash defense equal to its original attack slash defense until the end of your opponent's turn. You can only activate brilliant fusion once per turn. So I'm leaning towards this card is not super great just because the fact that we've seen like most of the time, like big stats don't really seem to do a whole lot in Yu-Gi-Oh that doesn't seem to be like a main win condition. Also, if this card gets destroyed, you just lose that monster, which isn't inherently great. But I don't really know how good Gem Knights are. That's like the one thing that is kind of stopping me from saying this card is outright bad. No, I'll give you a hint. Uh, there's one monster called Seraph Knight, and it gives you an additional normal summon. Because you gave me that, like, for instance, if I'm going to play this card, I'm going to put a card like that in my deck because that seems very good. Without knowing the rest of the Gem Knights, that seems pretty decent. So this card has to be good in the right deck. Like, again, like this is a very context dependent deck. You're not putting this in any deck. You have to be building around that specific, like a specific Gem Knight or two specific Gem Knights. And because it's in your extra deck, it's arguably a little bit better. So, yeah, it's probably good. I'd probably say it's decent. Is that your final answer? That's my final answer. I'll give you another half point for that. This card is actually insane. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it, man. Okay, all right. Are Gem Knights just that good? One Seraph Knight is really, really good. Like, who would have guessed that just being able to have two normal summons is absolutely cracked. And two, <laughs> it sends the materials from deck to graveyard. So basically, it just acts as a free foolish burial. And we all know how good sending cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! from deck to the graveyard is especially when it could be targeted in the form of like brilliant fusion. I was gonna say, I didn't even consider the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, is this man reading this card right? <laughs> I said this to you last time, but just the comparison between magic and this is just insane. Like it's so hard to judge because this, this game plays like no other. If Hearthstone is like checkers and Magic the Gathering is like chess, Yu-Gi-Oh is like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> That was fun. Thanks for doing this again. Anytime, homie. Confidence is at an all-time low.